Kanasega is working as a lecturer in Department of Information Technology, Anna University, Chennai. He finished his MCA from Urumu Dhanalakshmi College, Bharati Dasan University. He finished his ME in Computer Science and Engineering from College of Engineering, Anna University. His areas of interest are multi-core programming and architecture, programming models, compiler, automata theory, cryptography and algorithms. He is an expertise in subjects like compiler design, formal languages and automata theory, analysis of algorithms. His research area is code generation for multi-core architecture. Welcome to the UGC lecture series on computer science. We are having the subject of uh, uh, compiler design. So, in the previous episode, uh, we have seen that is how an SLR parsing table is constructed uh, from the LR of 0 items. That is, we will be given a grammar, context free grammar, and uh, we need to construct the augmented grammar out of the context free grammar. So, from that, uh, we uh, that is, find out the set of all canonical. Uh, items that is LR of 0 items with the help of the appropriate procedures and then we have constructed the SLR parsing table. So, we know that the SLR parsing may fail for some of the grammars, but there will be a, a different uh, parser that is canonical LR parser and when it is constructed for a particular grammar, we are sure that it will be successful in almost all kind of uh, that is your context free grammars. So, now the uh, point which we have to study here is, so under what kind of circumstances the SLR parser will fail in constructing a valid parsing table, uh, which means that we will not be able to do the parsing with the help of the SLR parsing table. So, let us see the issues. So, the first of all we have the uh, ith state here. So, there is a uh, rule called that is the item of the form a derives alpha dot and uh, we are having the small a that is in the follow set of A, uh, which means that by the procedure of our uh, uh, parsing table, SLR parsing table construction, we know that the ith state is going for a reduction uh, by using the production of the form that is A derives alpha for the input symbol that is A. So, what it says is whenever we get the uh, that is input symbol small a in the input uh, buffer and if you find that uh, there is an item the, of the form a derivative alpha is calling for a reduction. The situation is we must go for replacing the alpha which is available on the top of the stack by the left hand side that is nothing but your a and the a small a which is going to be still remaining in your uh, buffer. So, this is a situation for a uh, reduce action which will be marked in the SLR parsing table. But the problem there is so when it is going to be i on the top of the stack and uh, there may be a viable prefix that is called a beta alpha which is on top of the stack such that so this beta a cannot be followed by a which means actually we have seen that a calls for a reduction but we have a that is viable prefix that is going to be beta a so which cannot be followed by a in the right sentential form that is because of the right sentential form um, and the bottom of parsing we have a situation beta a cannot be followed by the small a. So, if it is the case then calling for a reduction will be a uh, there is a wrong move. So, now the question is we need to avoid uh, the situation of going for a reduction in this condition that is a calls for reduction of uh, the reduction by the production called a derivative alpha dot, but we have a situation beta a cannot be followed by the small a. So, if you go for that deduction, then we will be having ending up with some kind of wrong uh, that is parse reconstruction. There is going to be a conflict with reduce reduce conflict. So, now this kind of reduction must be avoided. So, to avoid this reduction, we need some extra information into your uh, the LR of LR, LR items. So, the items being used by SLR parsers are called LR of 0 items. And now the extra information which is required for avoiding that kind of wrong reduce actions will be incorporated into the items in the form of a terminal. So, the number of terminals we will be introducing into the LR of 0 items that is LR of LR items is going to be exactly 1. 
and we call that item as look ahead. Since the size of the look ahead is exactly 1, we call the new item as LR of 1 items. So, an LR of 1 item is going to be of the form a derives alpha dot beta that is a normal uh, that is form of LR of 0 items comma small a where the small a is going to be the look ahead symbol. So, for every item in each state of the LR of LR parser we have an input symbol and only if that input symbol follows the handle then alpha which is going for a reduction. So, that extra information will be available in the second that is component of your LR of the LR item where A derives alpha da beta is going to be the production and the small a is going to be a terminal or it can even be dollar also. Dollar actually it is denoting the end of the string. So, now what is the role being played by this extra information? So, this item, items are actually called as LR of 1 items and the 1 is actually referring the length of the look ahead. As far as look ahead is concerned, so I said that it is going to be exactly 1 in length, but there may be even more number of look aheads like it can be A or B or C like that, but it cannot be A B or it cannot be A C. In that case, there will be two number of look aheads. So, then those kind of uh, uh, look aheads will be uh, sorry the items will be called as L R of K items for some value of K, but here we are having the uh, that is single look ahead item that is going to be our LR of uh, one item. So, now what role the look ahead is going to play as far as the LR of one items are concerned that is during your parsing process. As long as we have an item of the form A derives alpha dot beta where beta is not equal to epsilon then the look ahead has no impact that is whether we are having the look ahead or whatever be the look ahead we are having in this LR of one item, as long as the dot is on not on the rightmost end of the item, we say that it has no impact on your passing process. But when the item is of the form A derives alpha dot comma A, so here is the problem that is the situation where we have faced the problem. That is whether you should go ahead with a reduction or not. Earlier we have seen that it is in your SLR parsing that is in your LR of 0 items, A derives alpha dot will initiate a reduce action provided small a follows uh, that is the small a is going to be on the input buffer. But here A derives alpha dot is going to be a reduction or going to initiate a reduction only if the next input symbol is A that is what the meaning of A. So, if you have an item of the form A derives alpha dot beta comma A, the small a has no significance when beta is not equal to epsilon, but small a is going to be the symbol to be used for initiating or deciding the reduce action only if the beta component is equal to epsilon. So, beta is equal to epsilon means that when we have the dot on the extreme rightmost position of the uh, that is LR of LR item. So, here it is going to be L called as LR of 1 item as we are having exactly 1 look ahead. So, now the question is how will you construct the LR of uh, that is 1 items. So, we have 3 procedures, one is the items of uh, uh, that is the given grammar, augmented grammar that is g dash and the second one is uh, closure of i where i is a set of state, then go to of i comma x where i is a state and then followed by uh, that is x that is a symbol for which we are applying the transition. So, these three procedures will help us in computing the LR of one items. So, here is a first function which we are having is procedure items of uh, g dash where g dash is the augmented grammar which will be obtained from the given grammar by introducing an additional production for s dash derives s. So, now the first that is state of the canonical set of LR of 1 items will be computed from the closure of s dash derives dot s comma dollar. So, we should know the meaning of uh, the dollar the reason why we introduce the dollar here. Another thing is here the dot is on the beginning of the right hand side. 
so it has it is not going to initiate any reduce action so the dollar that is look at as no significance but still why do we in introduce that dollar on the uh, position of your look at so dollar is a special symbol which is introduced in your lr of one items denoting the end of any string which is going to be passed by the parser so when you go for reduce action if it is a reduction for s dash derives s it will be allowed only if dollar is following the input so if dollar is following the input which means that there is no more symbol for uh, shifting from the buffer to the stack or no more symbol for parsing as the parsing has been already over uh, since the buffer is empty so that situation is marked only for the dollar that is what dollar is being introduced into the closure set of s dash derives dot s so that is the initial uh, that is state being obtained so now for every item in the state being obtained that is your state called i in the canonical set of items called c and each grammar symbol x so what we compute is go to of i comma x so that is a function so which will return another that is set of items uh, which will be looking for an item of the form a derives alpha dot x beta so this x is going to be a symbol which immediately follows the dot position so that is what we are looking for so if that set is a non empty set then we will be adding it into capital c so capital c is going to be a uh, that is the final output we start it with the set of items being obtained from the augmented grammar's additional production that is s dash derives dot s uh, with the default look ahead called uh, dollar that is denoting the end of the string and from that we will keep on applying the go to function as long as it is non empty and if it is non empty then we will be adding it into the canonical set of items called c and whenever it is going to be empty then we will find out the other transitions and if it is all the transitions have been completed then we will say that the canonical items have been computed which will give you the list of lr of one items so this is the uh, first function and the second one is the function went for closure so you are given i that is a state which contains some set of items of the form a derives alpha dot b beta or in general it is of the form a derives alpha dot beta where beta may be uh, empty or uh, there is non empty but when you find that this beta is empty it is going for a reduce action but now we are looking for the computation of closure the closure is going to be empty if dot is followed either by blank or by any terminal and we are concerned about computing the closure so you should go for for each item a derives alpha dot b beta comma a that is going to be the general form of any that is lr of one item so what we have here is next to dot we have a variable which is going to be further expanded which means that for b we have one or more number of productions and if such an item is already available in the state called i you find out what are all the various productions available in that is for b so if there exists a production of the form b derives gamma then what should be done is we will be adding b derives dot gamma into the resulting set of items that is nothing but the outcome of your closure but here we should know that is how we are computing the that is look ahead when you have the look ahead in the original item it is called a here and now how do we compute the look ahead for the new item being added that is nothing but b derives uh, dot gamma so the procedure is you just take the concatenation of beta and a in the source item so beta may be either empty or can even be non empty also it can be a terminal or even the variable but you just take the concatenation of beta and a if beta is empty we will be having just a only and if beta is non empty we will be having the uh, some symbols from beta followed by a anyway we are sure that beta a will never be empty because at least we will be having a uh, which is nothing but the look ahead available on this as the second component so you just take beta a and then 
compute the first of beta a. So, there will be one or more number of symbols being obtained as a result of the first of beta a. So, if you go for computing that those set of symbols that is nothing but here we call it as b which will be added as a result of uh, the new item which is b derives dot gamma followed by b. So, if this item is not already there in the given state called i you add it and if it is already there simply discard it. So, this process is to be uh, repeated as long as we have uh, that is more number of new items being created. So, we have the item of the form a derives alpha dot uh, b beta comma a where b is a non terminal for which there exist one or more number of productions and if b has a rule of the form b derives gamma then b derives dot gamma is to be added with the look ahead called uh, that is b where small b which is nothing uh, which is obtained from the first set of beta comma a. So, that is how we are computing the closure item. The next procedure is going to be go to of i comma x. So, which we shall see after a short break. Welcome back. So, we have seen that is how the closure of a set of item will be computed when you are generating the entire collection of L or of 1 items. The next function we need to compute is or study is go to function. So, this will generate the state transitions. So, from the current state what will be the resulting state obtained for the symbol. Symbol here what is given as capital X. So, the question is now you have to find out the set of all items in which x is going to be the next symbol followed by the dot. That is we are looking for items of the form a derives alpha dot x beta and since it is going to be the LR of one item where the items entire format is a derives alpha dot x beta comma a where the small a is going to be the look at symbol. So, this go to of i comma x this function will never create uh, or never be influenced by the look ahead because the look ahead has no influence uh, in the go to function. Look ahead is significant only when we compute the closure. So, now what is the simple job being done by this go to function is the dot which is there on the left hand side of x will be simply moved on to the right hand side of x. So, your new item is going to be a derives alpha x dot b that is going to be beta not b here it is going to be beta comma a where a is going to be the already existing look ahead. And next to this dot there may be once again a variable or it can be a terminal. So, if it is a terminal then it would not be creating any other item, but if it is a non terminal that is means a variable once again it will go for constructing some more items but those kind of items will be generated with the help of the function called closure. So, the go to function will find x next to dot and move dot next to x and return the closure of that particular item. So, if a derives alpha dot b x beta is there x beta comma a is there in the state i then we will return closure of a derives alpha x dot beta comma a. So, now we have the entire collection of uh, that is items which will be in the uh, set called that is capital C and we call those set of items as LR of 1 items and from this LR of 1 items we can construct the parsing table and that parsing table will be called as the canonical LR of parsing. So, if you are given a grammar G the number of states we get as outcome for an SLR parsing table may be lesser. But whereas, for the same grammar if you go for the canonical LR parsing table we will be having more number of states. So, that itself is showing the complexity behind the canonical LR parsing table. But whereas, the advantage is for any grammar if it is going to be context free then certainly the canonical LR parsing table construction will succeed irrespective of whatever be the complexity of the grammar given is. 
that is the advantage in going for the canonical LR of parsing table. Here we have an example the how we are constructing the LR of one items. So, the grammar given is S derives capital C, capital C and capital C derives small c followed by capital C or D. So, first we need to construct only the uh, that is your uh, augmented grammar. So, that is obtained by introducing an additional production called S dash derives S. So, S derives C C, C derives C C and C derives D. So, the first item is going to be the closure of S dash derives uh, dot S comma dollar. So, since dot is followed by the capital S, you write all the productions for S. So, it is going to be only one production. The production is S derives dot C C and now we need to find out what is beta A. So, the beta A is beta is empty here and the A is dollar. When we concatenate empty and dollar we will have dollar. First of dollar is dollar. So, we will put dollar here. We start with this to add this item and expand this S. Expanding this S we will be having S derives dot C C that is the only production available for us and beta is epsilon a is dollar concatenation will give you a uh, first dollar and first of dollar is going to be dollar. So, we put it here and now the closure of this item is to be returned as answer that is when you see this dot it is followed by once again a variable that is capital C and that variable is to be expanded now we have two productions one is dot C followed by capital C another one is dot D. So, here the lookaheads are to be computed now beta here is capital C A is dollar. So, you have to find out the first of beta A that is in this case it is first of C dollar. The first of C is small c and d as we have seen the productions for capital, uh, capital C are uh, one is going to be small c followed by capital C and another one is d. If it is small c followed by capital C small c will be the answer as first and if it is d, d will be the answer as d is a terminal. So, we have two lookaheads here. So, the item is going to be c derives dot c capital C comma c or d and the next item is c derives dot d comma c or d once again. So, the kernel is going to be different. The first kernel item is c derives dot c capital C and the second kernel item is c derives dot d, but whereas lookaheads are going to be same that is c and d it is because of both the items are derived from the source item called S derives dot capital C capital C comma dollar. So, this is what the uh, that is set of all items available in the state number called I 0. So, now we need to compute the various uh, transitions which are possible from I 0. It is the first one is for capital S, the second one is for capital C and third one is for small d small c and the fourth one is for small d. So, we compute the first transition for capital S i naught comma s. We move the dot to the right. So, we will be having the item called s dash derives s dot comma dollar because we have already seen that the go to function does not make any change as far as the lookaheads are concerned. So, lookaheads remains same and now we find whether it is possible to return anything as the closure of this the closure of this item is going to be empty as dot is on the rightmost end where it is not followed by any variable. And when you look at the next one we compute the transition for capital C. So, it is going to be go to of i naught comma capital C. So, only one item is eligible now uh, that is your S derives dot capital C capital C comma dollar. So, dot moves right we get the new item called S derives C dot C comma and then it is going to be dollar and from here once again you have to compute the uh, the transitions or the closure of this. The closure of this is you write all productions for capital C, the productions are going to be small c followed by capital C and another one is small d and now you compute what is beta a. Beta a is epsilon followed by dollar when we concatenate we will be having dollar first of dollar is dollar. So, we have dollar and dollar on both items. So, that is your i 2 and uh, your i 3 is going to be uh, this item that is i naught comma c that is for small c we compute the transitions. 
So, it is going to be C derived small c dot capital C comma C R D. It is because of uh, for small c we find your beta is going to be capital C and uh, this one your um, a is going to be C or D. So, the output is going to be C or D as lookagates and uh, we have C dot capital C, capital C when expanded we will be having C or D and for even D also we have C or D. So, that is going to be the set of all items obtained as a result of go to of i naught comma C and now it is i naught comma D. So, C derives D dot, it is an item of the form of A derives alpha dot and the lookagates are going to be C comma D and the closure of this particular item is going to be empty since dot on the rightmost end which is not followed by any variable. So, now we have the transitions for uh, that is capital S, capital C, small c, small d uh, which are all obtained from the state called I naught. Now, we need to uh, compute the rest of the transitions that is from I to we need to compute the transition for capital C, small c and small d and from I 3 we need to compute the transitions for capital C, small c and small d. From I 0 sorry I 1 and I 4 there is no need for going for the transitions as we find the dot is on the rightmost end already on the items. So, which will enable only the uh, reduce actions rather than computing the additional transitions. So, here is the remaining transitions we have uh, I 2 comma capital C we have S derives C C dot comma dollar and I 6 is going to be this I 2 comma capital small c. So, this time we have the transition which moves dot from the left end of our small c to the right. So, we have capital C which is deriving small c dot capital C comma dollar and C derives dot C capital C comma dollar because of the C gets expanded. We find beta is empty A is dollar concatenation of beta and A will be dollar. So, first of dollar is dollar and we have dollar here. So, C derives dot C capital C comma dollar, C derives dot D comma dollar. So, that is going to be our I 6 and uh, we have I 7 which will be C derives D dot comma dollar and I 8. So, we have that uh, C derives small c capital C do dot comma C or D. Then your uh, the next transition which is from I 3 we need to compute the transition for small d. So, that is going for uh, I 4 which is nothing but the repetition of uh, all the items available in I 4 which we have already computed. Uh, then your I 9 we is obtained from I 6 by computing the transition for capital 6 this is a state from where we compute transitions for capital C which will be C derives uh, small c followed by capital C dot comma uh, dollar then from I 6 comma D we have I 7 from I 6 comma C we have I 6. So, this is what uh, the uh, set of all items which we have obtained as a result of uh, the computation of or applying your go to function, closure function and uh, the items function. So, now these kind of uh, items are supposed to be used for constructing the uh, canonical LR parsing table. So, we call it other it as the CLR parsing table. So, the parsing table which we are getting as a result of uh, whether it is going to be LR of 0 items or it is going to be LR of 1 items, they are going to have the same structure uh, which is having two components, one is going to be the action and another one is going to be the uh, that is go to function. So, now the uh, question is how will you construct the parsing table uh, from this LR of 1 items. So, as far as LR of 0 items are concerned, we have, uh, we have a procedure which will compute the or which will generate the parsing table from the LR of 0 items and similarly, we have another that is function uh, which will be having the um, that is procedure which will produce the LR of canonical LR of uh, parsing table with the help of LR of 1 items. So, that particular topic we shall see in the uh, next episode. So, to conclude we have seen that is how the problem faced in SLR is overcome as far as CLR is concerned. We introduce an extra information into the uh, that is parsing uh, that is LR of 0 item. So, we will be calling that LR of 0 item as LR of 1 item where LR of 1 is going to have the uh, look ahead and only one look ahead is there. So, this look ahead will decide whether we should continue with the 
uh, that is you are uh, yellow of uh, sorry the reduced section or we should not go for the uh, reduced section. So, the question component uh, we have the problem is derives it is a grammar for assignment statement and what is the role of the lookagate symbol in yellow of one items and uh, another one is how the closure of an yellow of one item is computed when you are given the uh, grammar. So, that is about uh, this episode. In the next episode, we will be seeing that is how the uh, parsing table meant for CLR that is canonical LR parsing table will be constructed. So, with this I conclude this episode. Thank you.